Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial of ISTQB Foundation Examination. Here, uh, finally we are done with Chapter 2 and now we'll be looking into the sample exam questions or sample questions of Chapter 2. So let's understand what kind of typical questions you can expect as a part of Chapter 2 and the content what we have covered so far. So based on that, we'll be looking into some of the sample questions and uh, understand that how the pattern of the questions from the chapter 2 would be. So the very first question here we have got is from the topic functional and non-functional testing where the question says which of the following statements best describes the non-functional testing. So I think this this is one of them where it is quite straightforward and uh, does not require any kind of uh, you know exploration or um, you know, brainstorming, but at some point of time, it's equally important to be careful and uh, going through all the options uh, by understanding them. So let's look at the options here. So we have got A as non-functional testing is the process of testing an integrated system to verify that it meets the specified requirements. And that's like when you talk about the specified requirements, obviously, it is uh, the entire system testing or also like talking about the functional testing mainly. B, the non-functional testing is the process of testing to determine system compliance with the coding standards. That's related to something else which we can say as static analysis, but uh, obviously has nothing to do when you talk about coding standards. <clears throat> it has nothing to specific when we have learned about non-functionals. Uh, C, non-functional testing is testing without reference to an internal structure of a system. That mainly describes the black box testing definition. So again, it's not. But when you look at D, non-functional testing is system testing or testing system attributes like usability, reliability, or maintainability. Now that's where we get a straightforward answer for the non-functional parameters or the characteristics of non-functional testing. So this is where we can finally assure ourselves that D is the right answer compared to A, B, C. And this was one of the you know most simplest thing what you can expect as a part of ISTQB. So ISTQB is not always strict, complicated. Sometimes they can ask you a straightforward question which will be easy for you to answer and understand. The next question here, which of the following is a, <coughs> excuse me, which of the following is a characteristics of good testing and applies to any software development lifecycle model? So this is from the topic one from the chapter two, where we were talking about the good characteristics uh, of testing and we also spoke, spoke about uh, the V model. So, you know, from that, that aspect, we have got this question straightforward. So we had got four characteristics of good testing. Let's see which one has got one of them. A, acceptance testing is always the final test level to be applied. No, it's not one of the characteristics. Whereas B says all test levels are planned and completed for each developed feature. Now we basically have like, you know, there must be a specific objective for each test level which is planned for execution. C, uh, testers are involved as soon as the first piece of code can be executed. No where we say the characteristic says that tester must be involved as soon as the drafts are available, not even like when the development starts or the first code can be executed. That's too late. Uh, when we talk about D, for every development activity, there is a corresponding testing activity. So obviously that's one which is straightforward taken from the syllabus. That's like uh, we must be having the corresponding testing activity for each development activity, whereas the others are like the analysis and design must begin during the corresponding development activity. Also, uh, the, there must be a specific objective for each test levels. So this is straightforward from the discussion what we had in the very first tutorial of this chapter. And from there, we say that the D is uh, one of the good characteristics of testing which can be applied to any software development model. So we have four characteristics of good testing, but here we have got only one and that's D, which is the right answer. Looking into the next, uh, which of the following is an example of maintenance testing? Team, very previous tutorial, the just previous tutorial if you have looked into, uh, is uh, one of the example, uh, you know, we have spoke about, like, or spoken about the maintenance testing there. So maintenance testing is all about, like, updates, upgrades, migration, and retirement. So let's look into uh, the options given here. Uh, to test corrected defects during development of a new system. So that's obviously uh, we're talking about fixing the defects, which is uh, not uh, 
post release option it is a pre release option when you look at b to test enhancements to an existing operational system yeah this sounds good where maintenance deals with updates where when updates can be called as the enhancements to an existing operational system c to handle complaints about the system quality during user acceptance testing and i think that's a irrelevant statement first of all because we cannot handle complaints with during acceptance testing that is post release from the end user and moreover if you are accepting uh, you know complaints during user acceptance testing that's from the client and that's maybe you know alpha testing it's not maintenance testing d to integrate functions during the development of a new system and that is when they say development of a new system it's about integration testing so that is a general process again and it's a pre release event whereas when you talk about b the test enhancements to an existing operational system that's what you call it as an update or maybe an upgrade where you test those enhancements which are being added to an existing operational live application so the right answer is b here looking on to the next uh, we have got another uh, example on a uh, different type of question altogether so here this type of questions will basically consist of uh, certain statements and you need to find out like what all statements out of the given one are correct or maybe false so be careful when you look at the question on the top are uh, they asking about true or false and based on that you need to first mark each one of these statements with a uh, notation maybe true or false and then look at the answer set so first for these kind of question first you need to get your own answer then look at the answer set and then get the right one so let's start with all the statements here first A says regression testing and retesting are the same. Obviously not, because retesting is to test if the defect has been fixed, and regression testing is to confirm there is any kind of adverse effect due to the fix. B regression test shows if all failures have been resolved. No, that's the definition of retesting or confirmation testing. So it's not at all true. C regression tests are good candidate for test automation. Yes. that's where we see the very first statement which is true that is c where regression testing are a good candidate of automation testing where uh, we always look forward to automate them just because the primary objective is not to find defects is just to make sure that everything is still working fine whereas the option d says uh, regression tests are performed to uncover defects as a result of changes in the program yes that's the definition of regression testing and quite straightforward to say it is true whereas e regression test should not be performed during integration testing team regression testing can be related to any particular level any particular test wherever you think the defect has been fixed then regression testing follows and you can have component defects you can have integration defects you can have system defects and so on so irrespective of the level regression testing is performed if you do any kind of changes to the existing application or maybe if there is a defect fixed so e is also not true so finally we have got only two statements your c and d and there's only one option that is c which says c and d are true so that's how you make it simple and easy for you to you know mark the right answers by evaluating yourself and getting your answer first and then you look at the answer set which makes your job quite simpler Moving to the next one or the last question from this chapter as of now is which of the following statements comparing component testing and system testing is true so here they are basically trying to ask you the difference between the two different levels that's component testing and system testing so let's start with a component testing verifies the functionality of the software module yes that's fine project program objects and classes that are separately testable yes it is unit testing whereas the system testing verifies interfaces between components and interaction between the different parts of system so team if you see here the first part is absolutely fine but the second part is telling you about the cid and sid that's component integration testing and system integration testing so the only catch or the things to wonder about is the first part the moment you think that it is true then you don't read the second part so that's quite common among the human psychology and that's the reason they have used this trick so you need to make sure that you have read the option completely 
before you make your choice as the right answer and also understood the entire option clearly before you make your own right choice. So if you see option A, the first part is absolutely fine, whereas the second part is dealing with not the definition of system system, it's a definition of component integration and system integration. Let's look at B. Test cases for component testing are usually derived from component specification, design specification, or data models, whereas test cases for system testing are usually derived from requirement specification, functional specifications, or use cases. So team, if you remember, when we were talking about that tutorial, or you can quickly refer the tutorial of test levels, and uh, we were talking about the test basis and the typical test objects. So they have taken the topic test basis from these two levels, and they are trying to compare it. And as of far, if you remember that, then it is absolutely fine. So B is looking, as of now, the most relevant answer, subjected, the C and D are not correct. Let's look into C. Component testing only focuses on functional characteristics, whereas system testing focuses on functional and non-functional characteristics. Team, uh, we have now know, you know, known about the functional and non-functional differences. So obviously, functional is something which is completely into the core functionalities of the application, the core feature of the applications, whereas non-functional characteristics begin only after system testing. So that's an understanding which we have already created by understanding this section on functional and non-functional. So C is not the one which can be picked compared to B. D, component testing is a responsibility of testers, whereas system testing is typically a responsibility of the user of the system, completely irrelevant because we do not in involve our end users for any kind of testing. Yeah. To a certain extent, I can say that you're talking about beta testing, then it is only to say, you know, you collect feedback from them, but not to test and validate it. So D is also ruled out. So finally, we are left with one option, that's B. And that's where we say that it is the most relevant option. So team, all we need to understand in this kind of question is that they, it's not mandatory, they will always give you definitions. This is how they drag the test basis or the typical test objects about the testing. So having those understanding from the content or the tutorial would definitely help you to have a clarity on what exactly they are looking for and what would be the right answer. So finally, you know, we'll be having around eight questions from this uh, chapter. So the weightage or, you know, Question sharing from this chapter is eight. So you have eight marks to score in this chapter. And previous chapter, chapter one, there was seven questions. So you will be having seven questions allocated for chapter one, eight questions for allocation in chapter two. So as of now, you have uh, you know 15 questions covered as a part of uh, chapter one and chapter two. So out of 40, we have covered 15 questions. So Hope you have the clarity on the sample questions from the chapter 2 as well. For more details, please uh, go through the tutorials of the chapter 2 to understand better. Still, if in case you have any clarification, you're always welcome to comment your queries below. And I'll be getting back to you with more details on that with the clarifications. Stay tuned for more updates, uh, new videos on the upcoming chapters and tutorials. Till then, stay tuned, keep learning, and enjoy your learning. Thank you.